Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on marginal analysis with the marginal average cost, revenue, and profit functions. So in the previous video, we talked about the marginal cost, marginal revenue, and marginal profit functions. In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve applications involving the marginal average cost, marginal average revenue, and marginal average profit. And then we're also going to continue solving various applications related to business and economics. So let's pick up where we left off with marginal average cost, marginal average revenue, and marginal average profit. So sometimes, in addition to understanding the total cost and the marginal cost, we sometimes want to understand the average cost, the average revenue, and also the average profit. So let's start with those definitions. The average cost, or AC, for Q items is the total cost divided by the quantity Q. So it gives you the average cost per unit produced. So average cost of Q is equal to the cost function, or total cost function, when you produce Q units, and then you divide by Q units. So the numerator is going to give you the cost of production for the Q units, and then you divide by Q, and that will give you an average. The average revenue is defined very similarly. AR for Q items is the total revenue function divided by the quantity Q. So AR, or average revenue, is the revenue function, or total revenue, at Q units. So you sell Q units, and then you divide by Q units, and this will give you the average revenue. And the average profit is AP for Q units is the total profit divided by the quantity Q. So AP of Q is the profit function divided by Q. So it will tell you on average how much does the profit change for each additional unit. So we've already seen how to find the average rates of change by finding the slopes of the secant line on a graph. The average cost, the average revenue, the marginal cost, and the marginal revenue are each representing a rate of change. And we can find each of those slopes. So in particular, the graph that we're going to look at, the average cost and the average revenue are showing the slope of a secant line this way. The average cost, evaluated at Q units, is the slope of the secant line that connects these two points on the graph, 0, 0, and Q, the cost function at Q units. So if you take these two points, connect them with a line on your graph, and you calculate the slope, then that's what's called the average cost function at Q units. And the same way, the average revenue function at Q units is the slope of the secant line between the point 0, 0 and Q, comma, the revenue function at Q units. So let's look at that in terms of the graph. So in this graph, we have the same graph that we had in the previous video. We have a total cost function or cost function, TC, and you also have the revenue function or total revenue function, TR. Total cost function is represented in the graph in pink or red, and the total revenue function was the graph in blue. If you connect the points 0, 0 and the point Q, TC of Q, the total cost function or just the cost function at Q units, if you connect these two points, the one that are in red, then and you calculate the slope of that secant line, that is what's called the average cost function. Now, on the other hand, if you calculate the marginal cost function, then you're taking the derivative of the cost function, and that's the slope of the tangent line at Q units. And then using the same idea, if you connect the point 0, 0 and the point Q, revenue function evaluated at Q units, then you get the slope of the secant line between Q and Q units, and that's the average revenue function. But if you calculate the slope of the tangent line for the revenue function, then you get marginal revenue at Q units. That's the slope of the tangent line at Q units. So as we discussed previously, the marginal total cost or the marginal total revenue or the marginal profit is the derivative of the cost, revenue, and profit functions respectively. So now we're going to define what's called the marginal average cost, marginal average revenue, and, and the marginal average profit. So we've defined just previously the average cost, the average revenue, and the average profit. And now we can find the derivative of each of these three functions. And these are called marginal average cost, revenue, and profit. So if Q is the quantity of items of a commodity produced, then you have the following. The marginal average cost, which is denoted AC prime of Q, so it's the derivative of the average cost function. So D, D, Q, the variable is Q. So this is telling you take the derivative with respect to Q of the average cost function. And we know the average cost function is defined this way. It's the cost function divided by Q. So it's the derivative with respect to Q of this fraction. So sometimes you may have to simplify this fraction before you are able to use the differentiation rules. The marginal average revenue is defined to be very similarly. 
you take the average revenue function, evaluate at Q units, and you take the derivative, so AR prime of Q. It's the derivative with respect to Q of the average revenue function. And we know the average revenue is defined this way. It's the revenue function divided by Q. So it's the derivative of this fraction, the derivative of the revenue function divided by Q. And again, you may have to simplify this fraction before you can take the derivative using the rules. And then marginal average profit, same thing. It's AP prime of Q, so it's average profit function. And then you take the derivative, so prime notation. It's the derivative with respect to Q of the average profit. And the average profit function is defined as the fraction profit function divided by Q. So it's the derivative of this fraction. So let's look at example four, marginal average cost. The cost in thousands of dollars for producing X thousand cell phone cases is given by this function. C of X is equal to 22 plus X subtract 0.004 X squared. So part one, find the fixed cost of C of X. Now we did this in the previous video. We know the fixed cost is the total cost function evaluated at zero units produced, or it's just simply the cost function evaluated at zero units. So look at the function, replace all the X's with a zero. So you have 22 plus zero, subtract 0 0.004 times zero squared. And that will give you 22. So now the units, the cost is in thousands of dollars. So this is $22,000 is the fixed cost. So now part two, the average cost. It's reminding us that average cost is denoted as an AC. So find the average cost of 5,000 units, 10,000 units, and 20,000 units are produced. So let's remind ourselves what the average cost function is. The average cost function was given by this formula. So AC of Q is equal to the cost function at Q units divided by Q units. So let's do this with the variable X now. So the average cost function where the variables X is the cost function C of X divided by X. So we were given the cost function in the problem. So we're going to take this function C of X and divide every term by X. So 22 plus X subtract 0.004 X squared and divide the whole function by X. So now we're going to do something that we did earlier in the course where we know that each term is divided by X. 22 is divided by X. So that's one fraction. The second term X is divided by X. So that's the second fraction. And then the last fraction is negative 0.004 X squared divided by X. So now you can simplify each fraction. 22 divided by X is already simplified, so it stays the same. X divided by X gives you 1. And the last term, the X squared divided by X, will just give you X. So 0.004 X. And keep the signs between the terms. So now that we have the average cost function, we can evaluate the average cost function at 5, 10, and 20,000 units. So the average cost function for 5,000 cell phone cases would be 22 divided by 5 plus 1, subtract 0.004 times 5 for the X which is 5.38. So the cost was in thousands of dollars and the X was representing thousands of cell phone cases produced. So this would be $5.38 thousand dollars per thousand cell phone cases. All right, let's go to 10,000 now. So the average cost for 10,000 cases produced would be 22 divided by 10 plus one, subtract 0 0.004 times 10. That gives you $3.16 thousand dollars per thousand cell phone cases produced. And then the average cost for 20,000 would be 22 divided by 20 plus one, subtract 0 0.004 times 20, which is $2.02 thousand dollars per thousand cell phone cases. So notice as we increase the production from 5,000 to 10,000 to 20,000, the average cost function is telling us on average, how much does it cost for a thousand cases produced? The cost is being decreased. So it looks like in the long run, this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller over time. And now the last part, part three, find the marginal average cost when 5,000 cases are produced. So remember, the marginal average cost function is the derivative, because it's talking about the word marginal, of the average cost function. So to find the derivative of the average cost function, it's AC prime of Q. This was the definition. It's the derivative with respect to Q of the average cost function. So you find the average cost function first, then you take the derivative. And we know the average cost function was defined to be C of Q divided by Q, the cost function divided by Q. And you take the derivative of this fraction. So be extremely careful on what you're actually doing to find the marginal average cost. You find the average cost first, then you take the derivative. So this is not to be confused with average marginal cost function. 
with the average marginal cost function, you would find the marginal cost first. That would be the derivative of cost. And then average would be you take the derivative and you divide by x. That's not what we're talking about with this function. Marginal average cost is find the average cost function first. That's c of q divided by q. And then you take the derivative second. So we need to first find the average cost function, which is cost function divided by q, and then find the derivative. So average cost function we found out in the previous part. Average cost function of x was 22 divided by x plus 1, subtract 0.004x. We found this for the average cost because we took the cost function and divided every term by x. So now the second step, we want to find the derivative of this function. Find the derivative of the average cost function. Notice that we can't take the derivative yet because we don't have a differentiation rule to find the derivative of 22 divided by x. So take the x to the numerator to make it a negative exponent. So 22x to the negative 1. The other two terms are fine. So plus 1 subtract 0.004x. So now we can take the derivative using the power rule, the constant multiple property, and the constant function rule. So the derivative of the average cost function, you keep the constant 22, and you take the derivative of x to negative 1 using the power rule. So negative 1 comes down to the front. So 22 times negative 1 gives you negative 22. Keep the x, and now you subtract 1 from the exponent because you use the power rule. Negative 1 subtract 1. The derivative of 1, 1 is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of negative 0.004x is negative 0.004. And so we have the derivative of the average cost function. So this is the marginal average cost function negative 22x to the negative 2, subtract 0.004. So now we want to find what is the marginal average cost when 5,000 cases are produced. Substitute all the x's with a 5 now. So it's the marginal average cost to evaluate at 5 is negative 22 times 5 to the negative 2 power, subtract 0.004. That will be approximately negative 0.884. And now the units again. The units are thousands of dollars per thousand cell phone cases produced. So this finishes our video on marginal analysis in business and economics. Now that we've talked about marginal average cost, the marginal average revenue, and the marginal average profit functions. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we review exponential functions.